Hi everyone! How are you all today? It's absolutely beautiful outside, so I hope that you guys are um, outside and as having as good a weather as we are. So today, a lot of people have been asking me about um, standing abs um, and a workout to be able to do that. Um, a lot of the workouts actually use like a crunch motion to do um, standing crunches and this type of motion, which is actually not diastasis safe because you're you're crunching in and putting pressure on your abdominal wall. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a workout which is diastasis safe and um, we'll do it together. So let's get started. So the first thing I want us to do is work on engaging our TVAs or our transverse abdominis. So to do that you're going to put your hands down here and literally just breathe and engage so you should feel them come out. Now there's a couple of tricks to this and I'm going to try and show you as I go through it closer. So when you're doing this, you're going to hold here and you're going to engage. So this is me relaxed and engaged. And I can feel it down here. So even though your transverse um, abdominis come all the way around, this is um, just where the easiest part to feel it is. So you're going to engage. Now here's a couple of tricks. It's not a pelvic tilt like this. So you should keep that natural curvature of your spine there and just engage and hold breathing. And you should be able to breathe out and in so your ribs go sideways whilst you stay engaged. And the other trick here is if you see my ribs, when I engage, so here's the ribs, I engage and they drop. So watch that again. So it's relaxed and engaged. And relax and engage. Okay, that's great. And try not to um, suck in. So when you engage, some people tell you to pull your belly button into your spine, but what that's doing is it's thrusting your ribs out, which means you can't get a full breath, and it's actually causing more damage than good. So remember, it's engage and breathe and relax and engage. Breathe, make sure your ribs go out and relax. Okay, so now we've done that, what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to do knee lifts, okay? So these are going to be, as you lift up, I want you to exhale and engage, and inhale and relax. Exhale, inhale. That's it. So we're going to do 20 of these. One, two, three, good job. And keeping it coming up and keeping those TVAs nicely engaged and don't let your body move. So I don't want to see any of this, okay? That's just putting pressure and you're not using your abs, okay? So keep it going. I've totally lost count, so we're just going to keep going with this. Let's say 10 more. Good job. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is a pelvic tilt. So you do these, um, normally we'd be lying on the ground and doing a pelvic tilt, but we're going to do them standing because they're just as good. So what we're going to do is exhale and engage and release. And in and release. In and release. Good. So keep going with your pelvic tilts. Now what I want you to notice is that when you do a pelvic tilt, it's an actual tilt, right? And you're engaging and you're using those lower abs. But this isn't how you want to stand. If you're standing normally, you don't want to be tilting. Because see, when you tilt, you actually flatten your spine. And your curvature of your spine is actually there naturally 
to stop the pressure coming down on your spine. Okay? So you don't want to have a big arch in your back either, but you actually don't want to get rid of that natural arch. So let's keep going with these, because these are a great ab exercise, but not how you want to stand the whole time. That's it, good job. And let's just do two more. And one more, good job. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is you can use a wall or a chair and you're just going to point one leg out. I know you can't see my feet, but we're going to actually just lift up and down. And again, making sure your uh, TBAs are nice and engaged. And your back's got your natural flexion there. And your shoulders are back. And your head forward. There we go. And just lifting it up and down. And if you can, turn your leg out. So actually, your knee's pointing to the side, if you can. Because that's going to get not only your abs, but also your inner thigh. And we always want to work our inner thigh. Okay, now bring it to the side. Same thing, just up and down. Make sure your hips are squarely facing the wall or the front, wherever you're facing. And squeeze in your glutes. Shoulders back. And at this point, the knee to the ceiling. And let's bring it to the back. And here, what you want is your big toe touching the ground. Squeeze your butt. And keep both hips, bones pointing diagonally to the floor. This one's not so much for your ass, but such a good one for your butt. We have to keep it in. There we go. Okay, and this time let's turn it around. And carry on this way, and again, lifting up, there we go, nicely turned out so you get an inner thigh, as well as your abs, back, that's it, and 10 more, good job, and to the side, knee, is facing up. I know you can't see it quite on mine, unfortunately. Phone screen isn't quite big enough. Squeezing your glutes, knee to the ceiling, and squeeze it. And try and keep this whole area engaged, not sucked in, just TBAs engaged. And bring it to the back. Both hip bones pointing diagonally down. And lean ever so slightly forward. And make sure you really squeeze your glute. Okay, a lot of the time if we have bad posture, our glute actually doesn't work. Our hip flexors take over. And if our hip flexors take over, our glutes are too weak and that causes a lot of problems with our posture. And a lot of problems with your diastasis. So it's always good to do a little bit of glute work. Okay, shake it out a little bit. That's kind of hard. Right, so this time we're going to do some side crunches. So it's going to be like this. And we're going to crunch into our obliques. Now, we're going to push down and then squeeze. Squeeze and squeeze. Key for this one is when you go to the side, don't let yourself lean forward and don't let yourself lean backwards, okay? So we need to stay sideways. So what I recommend is actually coming kind of flat against the wall. Maybe not quite against it, but really close. Because then when you go to the side, you can feel if you lean forward, your bum's going to hit the wall. And if you lean back, your shoulders are going to hit the wall. So this will keep you in line to make sure that you're working the right muscles without putting pressure. So we're here, and let's do 10. One, two, Three, good job. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good job, and we're going to go to the other side. The obliques are actually the abs that are going to be bringing your diastasis or your abdominus rectus back together. That's what's pushing it. So these are so key to work if you have diastasis because they're actually going to be helping you bring it back together. And again. 
and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent stuff. Okay, so we've got one more move that we can do. And this is actually like a T-stand, or some people call them a deadlift. You need to be a little bit careful with them when you're doing them. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to get yourself all engaged, nice and tight, all square, and literally you're just going to lower yourself down. And then to come up, I want you to exhale and engage. So inhale and and engage. Exhale. Engage. And inhale. Exhale. And one more. Great stuff. And let's go to the other side. Same thing. Nice and aligned. You don't want to go down like this. It's all one movement. It's like a hinge from your hips. You hinge down with an inhale and exhale, coming up and engaging. And up and engage. Think of yourself like a teeter totter, or in New Zealand we call them a seesaw. I had to laugh the first time we, we came here and everybody was like, teeter totter. I'm like, what are you talking about? So you're like that. You're actually just hinging. This is one side with one kid on your foot, and the other's going down. There we go. Good job. So just to recap, those were a couple of exercises. We did uh, TVA standing up. If you still don't know how to engage your um, TVAs, I've got a um, video for you. And just let me know in the comments and I will help you out. The easiest way to do it is actually when you're lying down on your back to learn to engage. And then sitting is second easiest and standing is the hardest part. But you need to be able to do it in all positions because whenever you're lifting up anything, you really need to be able to um, engage before you lift any weights, your children, however that works for you, okay? So you need to be able to do it standing up. So practicing that with breathing, high knees, nicely engaged, nice and tight, our standing pelvic tilts, our balance series with the leg lifts, they're awesome for both butt and abs all over. A side crunch, doing that against the wall. And a T-stand, remembering to hinge like a teeter-totter. Okay, well I hope that that was useful for you all. And I'd love to hear your comments below. Okay, see you next week.